like preload before I'd be like, oh, welcome to the show. And then have and a then space. And just jump straight in there. <laughs> yeah, have a space to cut the intro. All right. Because when we started, well, you know, with YouTube algorithms and things like that, it's yeah. like, oh, people already gravitate to what they see in the initial 15 seconds. So instead of playing an intro or playing like yeah. the disclaimers and all this stuff, it's like, all right, well, this have like a cold opening and then jump to the intro and then yeah. come back in. So, so every day recording now. So in the light of the recent release of The Matrix, I decided that I was going to play an old character of mine. It's, you know, Agent 01010. Insert right here. Now we back. So, you know, back in those days, so I was like, let me get like the black tea, the little overcoat, the shades. Because like, you know, I'm really an agent of the Matrix by trying to break out the Matrix. I took the red pill and see things for what it is. But to the right of me, I have an agent of chaos. <laughs> 100% all day, every day. <laughs> <laughs> so my good friend, actually, this. but before we really get into the introduction to him, welcome to the show. The tourists come over to chill on the beach But they don't come over the hill where we sleep We got nightmares and they got fantasies No sanity, it's just insanity My mommy hoping nothing happens to me Now we back. So, please introduce yourself. Well, before we really get into them, before the people ranking about, so you know what it is is the niggas of Nassau, TB, and the Goat, Saint Anton Alexander, Lord Jalen Willard, to welcome you to another episode of Everything Cool, and we're joined by brother P. Giovanni in the background. Yep, the party of one in the backyard. P. Giovanni, a.k.a. PG-13, a.k.a. PG-13, a.k.a. PG, a.k.a. Your favorite non-bay, a.k.a. Hidden in Plain Sight, a.k.a. Too Many, a.k.a.'s. Too Many, a.k.a. Bakay on the mic. Bye, damn. <laughs> <laughs> and then, obviously, if you want to join a party in the backyard, just, you know, hit us up. Let us know yeah. what you're into. We're taking a lot of people this coming new year because we're trying to restore the feeling. And I gotta announce. Actually, this would be the first episode of New Year. So, Happy New Year, Merry Christmas, all that good stuff. Blessings in the winter solstice, Happy Kwanzaa, and all that good. <laughs> <laughs> so, without further ado, introducing our guest for today. My name is Ruckus Man, born in Nassau, living in Freeport. Sometimes in the states, sometimes in Canada, sometimes in Europe. All that. Shit. He goes wherever the four winds blow. Yeah, right. wherever the four winds blow. <laughs> Grammy used to say, over land and sea, let the wind blow free. But she's talking about pumping, so I know. <laughs> I know you say so, I know. Man, big question. Ruckus, man. Yes. Uncle Ruckus, no relation? No relation, no. <laughs> is, it pro- is it pronounced Raku? <laughs> like he says on the show. <laughs> oh, man. No, man, I was Ruckus, man, way before. I was Ruckus, man, from 1994. All right, all right. Interesting fact. Mm-hmm. My eighth grade uh, homeroom teacher actually gave me the name. She actually wrote on my report card, and I'll never forget this. This is what she, so, <laughs> she, what she put verbatim. She said, Devron is so unpredictable, even he doesn't know what he will do next. <laughs> He's like a little ruckus man. I was like, you know something? Ruckus that stick. That's going to stick. So ruckus. Thank you, brother. Brother Jalen and Brother PJ for having me on the show. I really appreciate it. Yeah, we Thanks, agents nice. of chaos, you know? Yeah, yeah. man. All day, 100%. <laughs> yeah. And by the way, that's Ruckus Podcast. You can find that almost, you have your thing almost everywhere. Like, and what was it? Spotify. Because uh, I mainly listen to it on Spotify. Yeah, man. So, you know, just get gear, get, get boy. Listen, I appreciate it. Just some disclaimer. Uh, ice cast. So, <laughs> just, you know, we, no, we discuss. So just understand that you might not want to play that at work. <laughs> I get it. He really is getting deep into yeah, it. Yeah. But, you know, safe for work. 
Yeah, but it's been a pleasure, you know. Um, ironically enough, um, actually, we just met just over the webs and things like yeah, that. And I yeah. appeared. Was it this year or last year? I, I, b- I believe it was late last year. Okay, late last yeah. year, I appeared on this show. We had like a two-hour phone call conversation. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, so, you know, that Intelligent was- Intelligent brother right here. Y'all, what, y'all need, what y'all can do is y'all can stop listening to dumb- <laughs> <laughs> and listen to listen to the, the, the good show right here. You could y'all don't learn nothing out there. Listen to things where you can learn something, man. Really? Learn something. Learn yourself. We gonna cut that clip. <laughs> <laughs> Use that road to Real. But yeah, but um, because what actually was supposed to happen was well before the pandemic. One of the plans for twenty twenty was me coming over to Freeport to appear on a bunch of different like yeah. creators and stuff like that. But. Well, actually, no. It wasn't 2020. Dorian happened first because I was supposed That's to, right. to come. That's right. I think That's right. That's right. He did that fall, and then Dorian happened that September. So that sort of yep. That's right. They yeah, jerked it right there. Yeah, but Dor- you know. Dorian decided to completely bungee grandpa. Yeah. yeah, yeah but. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, but you know, two years later, well, going almost three years, they made it happen, and that's still this trip still going to happen soon. So you know, follow us on everything, but. Before we really get into the heat of things, we have a little segment on our show called the Beaming Word Phrase, the saying of the day. All right. And we always give this honor to our guests. All right. <laughs> What's the Beaming Word of the day? Oh, let me see. What 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 word haven't y'all done yet? Because you know, my name is Ruckus. I, I say a little deeper. Bro, it's a long list. A long list. This is episode sixty-seven. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's yeah. see. Bohemian word of the day. Bohemian word of the day. Is there anything like specifically Grand Bayman say that other islands don't say? I've been there going into 12 years and no. no. At least not what I can think. Not, not see, because I say that now in the comment section right now. <laughs> they can say, but you, you all, you all get I, I, can't, I can't think of one thing is, 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 is on the, the list of questions which you, which you sent me. Oh. Uh, uh, I can tell you this right now. It's Parkin. Parkin. P O C K I N. Parkin. <laughs> Zaneo, I don't know where you get Parky from. <laughs> wow. <laughs> we, we, we. Oh, man. Sarge, I, I call you out, my nigga. All right. Parky, you say Parky the side, my lord. Oh, Park man. Because <laughs> the ironic part, recently we had Bam and Trey on Kool Aid episode, like on his channel, where um, Bam and Trey, I forget what her name is, his girlfriend. Yeah, yeah. She from Freeport. And then Kool Aid was like, but I know where y'all get this Parky from. <laughs> I say, I be just like, where's Porky? Where's he from? from right. I say, Porky. I say, and then I think I made a joke about, wait, that's why y'all, y'all niggas, that's why y'all let's eat pizza hot body, hot body pizza hot body, right? No, no, no. I can be, I can be all the way real, right? Pizza hot, pizza hot body ain't that bad, you know. I ain't know. Solid. Well, I was just Solid. Because I was like, I mean, you, 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 clearly Nasovians didn't think of that. <laughs> 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 so, yeah, but, it, but it's parking though. <laughs> it's parking, you see, yeah, it's parking. So to our international okay, okay. viewers, what is parking? Parking is a very sophisticated game <laughs> of taking a round object, a usually round object. A, a tennis ball or mm-hmm. something, you know, along those lines you know, a cue ball from pool. And <laughs> we engage in a very rousing and stimulating game of trying to boist the hell out of one another. Mm. Now, uh, my personal favorite is the variant of wall park, where you can only use one hand to catch and throw the ball. Yeah. And if you can do so, uh, you better run and get to touching on that wall because, right. you know, your head bug could get boiced off. So mm. hold on, wait, now watch this. Yeah. You call it wall park, right? Yes, yes. But you won't believe in free pop, we used to call it sauce. Sauce? Sauce but we used call parking sausage. Yeah, 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 exactly. We used yeah. call it wall sausage. What? Well, as we used to call a eat a park and are you playing a sausage? So, yeah. I've heard both mm. terms, yeah. yeah. Mm. I mean, okay, and and I got to say this too, right? It's, mm. it's supposed to be all in good fun. Some of y'all just take this argument just a bit too serious. <laughs> you know, so let's bring it back. You know, we right, having right. some fun, you know. Right, right. But, you know. We I, just I, bursting each other. We just bursting, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> and then, you know, you had... Niggas like us who we got a little creative and innovative with it, you know. Like I said, we used to use like the cue ball from pool or <laughs> y'all trying to put yeah. something in the hospital. <laughs> yeah, man. Using, like, using like 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 alternators and car starters. <laughs> 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 you know? Yeah, so uh yeah. 
But one thing you did learn how to do, you did learn to dodge. Oh, yeah. Mm. <laughs> you got to dodge. Got out of the way. If you could dodge a wrench, you could dodge a ball. What? <laughs> <laughs> and see, okay, this is another thing too, right? Uh, I see some people on social media talking about how beaten was traumatic for black children, right? Mm -hmm. Not saying that, you know. That ain't true. That ain't true. Yeah. But at the same time, look at the bright side. You learn some valuable skills. If mommy throw a belt, the belt at you or the clothes hanger, you know, or the cutting board at you and you learn to dodge, <laughs> you don't really, she was training you for the next game of porking. Oh. <laughs> see, you, you got you to gotta find a, the, the 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 silver lining in every cloud. You see what I'm saying? That's, that's what you got to do, yeah. Mine. Bro, I that's a whole topic when it's sell with the whole like beating and mm. like, people go, yeah, I used to get beat by a tire wrench. And I'm like, I'm trying to outdo that person. <laughs> yeah. It's, 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 it's like war stories. Yeah, yeah. Hey, man. I get beaten with a skin come up. I'm like, bro, that's, bro, that's, that's traumatic. That's, 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 yeah. abuse. <laughs> that's abuse. That's abuse. Right? Yes, that's abuse. Yes. <laughs> and it's probably why so many Bahamians don't have good sense. Now, let's move on. Mm, or right. alcoholics. <laughs> <laughs> Moving along into the... So, story. let's start with your <laughs> early life story. Like, how you got into... um, Well, how, how you... What was life growing up in Nassau, then moving to Freeport, and then... Um, because you, you were into the martial arts as well, so... Yeah. How you get into martial arts and get into this and get into that? I break that all down. All that down? Um, yeah. Now... As we move along in the story, some people are going to be embarrassed, but, you know, okay. <laughs> I, I, I truly don't care at this point. Um, another fun fact a lot of persons may not know is I actually grew up a Jehovah's Witness. Mm. So, um, so you know just, how to be knocking on doors? And yeah, I, I used to do that. Um, knocking on doors, preaching to people, watched out on the wake magazines, leaving tracks, Bible studies, returning verses, all that. I did that. Mm. Um, I was trying to be a good son for my mother. Mm. Um, there was a point that I actually did enjoy that, and I thought I would have been doing that for the rest of my life. And then... The, how should I say this? The, the, the floor came out from under me. Let me say it like that. So you took, you took the red pill. Yeah, I, I think so. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, it, it was just like certain questions started coming up in my mind that, you know, when I would ask the members, the older members and the leaders of the congregation, these questions, I wasn't getting satisfactory answers. And then when I persist with the questions, like, but, Shut up and go read your Bible. Okay, so you're not going to answer my question. You're just going to... Okay, no problem. All, right. <laughs> All is God. <laughs> and um, things got really bad between my mother and myself. And I was trying to find ways of escape. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of it came from the creative side. Um I got into martial arts like that. I was a very big fan of martial art movies and just like film in general. And I'm staring at the television trying to figure out how do they do this? Um, and I just want to pause there and say like, parents out there need to really look at their children. If they're borderline obsessed with something, that's to be a reason. Mm. You know, instead of writing it off as a waste of time. Maybe you might want to look at that and say, hey, this, my child has a unusual obsession with art. Awesome affinity for it. Yeah. yeah. Nah. So I would sit in front of the television for hours. I was not, to me, I was not wasting my time. I was looking at the television trying to figure out how did these people fit on the screen? How did Kit jump over the lake you know what I'm saying? How did I I can see He-Man on my wall? How did they get He-Man to move on the screen? I'm trying to figure that out as best as I can watching the screen. Um so that's where a lot of the creative um inspirations came from. Um unfortunately, as a witness, you are heavily discouraged from exploring that. So every little chance I got. 
away from the congregation and away from them. I got to explore that. And it it got to the point where I felt like being in that congregation, I was living a lie. They even have a term for it. They call it double lifing it. Mm-hmm. And essentially, that's what I was doing. And so I got to the point where it's like, look, I'm a creative person. I like being creative. I'm good at what I do. Mm-hmm. Um, people respect me for it. If I have to choose between being here or being over there, I'm going to be over there. And we, uh, my mother and I parted ways, uh, didn't speak to each other for the better half of 12 years. Um, and that time was a creative journey, um, finding out, you know, what I was good at from what I wasn't good at, um, was able to put out a, a martial arts film, if I'm not mistaken, the first one for the country. And which what was the name of this film? Name of the film is Knocking the Kong Style. Oh yeah. Oh. So mm. speaking on uh, just to interject real quick, I don't know if you've seen um recently mm-hmm. some behemoths like Shadfer and Charlie, they mm-hmm. made like a little short film called I saw Kong. that. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And, and 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 it was it was it was fun to see that. I, I tried reaching out to them. I don't know if they got my message. No, I could reach because I told Sharo when in October mm-hmm. when we was at the Geek Out, like he was there. Mm-hmm. And ironically he was hosting the Squid, Squid Games, Brand. the park. Okay, 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 okay. So I was like Charo, like I would like to do a crossover with Spider Baby and <laughs> Kung Shen and that's when yeah. one of his friends like sneak up. And like had a fake prop gun and put it in my head and like I just armed him. Like, all right, all right, all right. And then Char was like, "Bro, how you do that?" And he was like, "Yo, we can, I, yeah. you have potential." Yeah, no, for real. Y'all, y'all should do that. Yeah, y'all yeah. Should so do like that. you know, yeah. But I and I, I'd like to meet the brother. You know, it's, it's, it's what I appreciate about what he did was it. He clearly like put time and effort into it. Like it, it didn't look like. They just haphazardly put that together. No, they, they did research and all these different things. And, <laughs> and, 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 you know, I would like to meet him and, you know, just shake his hand and say, bro, you did a good job, you know? Yeah, I mean, you here until next week. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they be around. I don't know if they have any um, sound waves and stuff like that. Okay, but I mean, you yeah. know, if, if, if we can make it happen, let's make it happen. All right. I would that, you know. And I, I got to say this too, like when it comes to the whole like entertainment creative scene, um, Grand Bahama needs to take a good look at New Providence. Why are you saying that? I'm not saying that um, everybody in Nassau gets along so well, but I believe the 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 concept of working together is stronger here than it is in Grand Bahama. And that's not a good thing. I think it's more so generational. That's that too. Because it's like, I feel like, I would say, I guess my R my era is so more so mm-hmm. like 30 down, mm-hmm. where he's more better than the one up. Because yeah. then, cause, because being in the space for five years, I hear all the war stories and yeah. backbiting each other yeah. in the 2000s and early yeah. 2010s. Yeah. And it's like, bro, yeah. what y'all was doing that for? And then I get cool with a lot of the older people. And it's mm-hmm. like, oh, I ain't like this person. I ain't like, I'm like, okay, that's your beef. Or whatever. I ain't got nothing to do with that. It, it, a, lot <laughs> of time, a lot of times, you know, one person don't like another person really over dumbness. Yeah, yeah. He jealousy. tried to talk to my girl. She tried to talk to my man. They, they used to grind back in the day. Um, or, or you was jealous of me at yeah, this or you know, this and that. You know, and it, it, it. You are correct. It is a. It is like a generational thing. Um, the 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 everybody felt as if at least from what I saw at the time, uh, everybody not only wanted to be the first to do something, yeah. they wanted to be the only to do something. Or have monopoly or be the star. Exactly, yeah. and 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 that that's that doesn't work. Yeah, that's why I say I feel like that's a generational thing because mm-hmm. I think a lot of the creators you see in now, so they from grandma. Yeah, yeah. Or whatever, like a lot. Yeah. <laughs> like you know, you know. Un- unfortunately, because of I would go back as far as Francis and Jean. 
the hurricanes. Yeah, from two thousand four, three, four, four somewhere yeah, around. Yeah. From from that point, come forward, like for whatever reason, people from Grand Bahama had to come to Nassau to look for work or better opportunities and things like that. I get it, but I always used to say there was more talent and more potential in Grand Bahama than in Nassau. I mean, that's really fact because mm-hmm. I think because I remember Timmy. Mm-hmm. used to interview when he was the first star who that mm-hmm. and some of his guests who was a, a little bit more like they wasn't just doing like r&b hip-hop mm-hmm. they was doing like classical music shout out to uh, timmy by the way yeah shout out to timmy they was from grand Bahama and they mm-hmm. talked about the whole art scene and yeah. this and that and the diversity and i think now so i took that energy like because when by the time i came back home you saw a more diverse art yeah. culture, yeah. which wasn't there when I first left. Yeah. So it was like, you know, yeah. that's why I was like, it's a generational Another thing to thing, where yeah. like, okay, and then, and then obviously um, there were some more Bahamians that stayed in the US and Canada mm-hmm. and they were still kept the connection yeah. or whatever. So yeah. it was like, even though I wasn't there, well, my cousin lived there and when I go see what they are, I mm-hmm. take influence or they still pulling from the influence here. So exactly. it was in no breaking connection. Yeah. Even if you stayed abroad. Yeah. So, you know. And, and, and that's, that's, it's encouraging to see that, you know, the connections are still being held. Mm-hmm. Um, for whatever reason, though, it seems like it, the state, it goes like, let's use the United States and Canada. Canada, United States, when it gets to Bahamas, for some odd reason, it jumps over Grand Bahama and comes to Nassau. And it's like, I think that's a symptom of a, a deeper issue. You know? Um, my, my best friend in life, Michael Garvey, is um, uh, a partner of mine. We work together. And he created Grand Bahama Studios. Okay. So um, we're actually getting ready to release a short film very soon. And we have tried to work with a number of the other creatives in Grand Bahama. And for one odd reason or the other, it never seems to work out. And What do you mean? As it, as it pertains to what? Um, like they're having them to participate or? Uh, that, um, in my opinion, the largest hurdle comes in the term collaboration. Mm-hmm. Now, if you are collaborating with someone, so for example, if Agents of Chaos is going to collaborate with Everything Cool, Mm -hmm. then what we're doing is we're bringing all of our resources together Mm -hmm. and we're seeing how best we can put out a quality piece of content. Mm -hmm. Y'all agree? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. To the average person that we've come across, the term collaboration normally means I bring my idea, I use your equipment, I'm not going to pay for it. And once my content is done, you give it to me. And when I sell it, then I'll give you a 10% cut. Um, No, it's supposed to be (laughs) 50-50. That's that's, that's the first thing. Uh, Secondly, um, I know there's a lot of talk about intellectual property yeah. and people getting, you know, certain splits or whatever. Yeah, and then people getting taken advantage of because of coming up with something. I get that. Mm-hmm. Right? But at the same time, an idea is only as good as its funding. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So if someone comes and says, "Hey, I want to do a show about cars." Okay. That's it? <laughs> you want to do a show about cars and, and, and Freeport? Okay, fine. Um, not a terribly creative idea. What's stopping us from doing this ourselves? You know? Right. Like, And then people actually encountered that earlier this year because it's like, okay, how you... That's an example. You say you want to do a show about cars, right? Someone come up with you, you want to do a show about cars. And let's say their idea... This broad idea of cars, but then let's say you just randomly just start shooting different videos with cars. Oh, you took my idea. Uh, uh, 
Bro, it's about cars. It's about bro. cars. Like, bro, come like on. it ain't no yeah. specific idea. No. Right. Or whatever. I ain't take no theme, no topic. No. You probably was gonna talk about cars based on the fi- the luxury cars. Yeah. I might talk about cars based on building motor and this and that. Exactly. That's two different ideas. It's, it's all together. I ain't steal the idea. You no. was gonna take take it from a different direction and i was going to take it from different like so that ain't the same thing no nope. yeah we talking about cars or you might talk about best place how to maintain the car mm. or how to buy a car that's that's all two all different that's, things that's two different things or whatever so i mean i think generally people always because people so jaded about ideas being taken but mm. about me personally i I don't care. Like, because at the end of the day, you ain't gonna do it like me. Exactly. Right? <laughs> like, like that, that kind of exposes like where yeah. your creative level is at. Because yeah. don't, don't get me wrong now. Yeah. If you do come up with an innovative idea and someone takes it from you, you are going to feel some kind of way. Yeah. Of course. But at the same time, I think for all of us in this room as creatives, like you just said, if someone decides they're gonna try and capitalize on an idea, you don't necessarily feel a certain way about it because one they're not going to do it like you right and if you're at least if you have some good sense you're not going to tell them exactly. every single step of the way right well, yeah so you know um i think too i think both of you have ex- experienced this as creatives um there's like it's always something new that pops into your head. Yeah. Yes. No, normally, exactly. no, normally it's three o'clock in the morning when you're trying to go to sleep, mm-hmm. and it's like, shit, I gotta write this down. <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah. But you know, the the gears of your creative mind are always turning. Mm-hmm. So you know. So it's like you know, simply. Uh, but before we go any much closer or longer, I should say, yeah. let's take a quick break and we coming right back on everything cool. Yeah, you see. Because <laughs> you know what that means? Like, girl, you got big beard like that girl. <laughs> All right. That's for the sink. Um, welcome back. So it's everything cool, you see? <laughs> everything uh, 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 brother Jalen. So you gonna just take the the the, the Hennessy bottle coal yeah. and, and rebrand the white? Hold on. Those actually lights. Oh see it. There we go. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you see it? All right. Yeah. yeah see, see, that's what you do. That's what you do. See, see? Branding. Branding right there. A lot right. of y'all don't understand what branding is. Shout out to Gorgeous Glass. Shout out to Gorgeous Glass. I yeah. never meet y'all, but I will meet y'all still. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Because we have... Yeah, I got this with Cool. It's cool. They have a bottle. We got his brand on it, too. So I was like, yo, let me just get this for the part. Yeah, well, but... but yeah, um. I just realized something. I say Hennessy, y'all might want to beep that out because they ain't getting your number. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I know the good people that come with brewery, you know? Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> if, if y'all know, okay, well, fine. Don't beep it up. <laughs> so, you're on a podcast, mm-hmm. but you got a podcast. Why you, when I first saw Code Name Agents of Chaos, mm-hmm. I was like, was he inspired by Kids Next Door? Partly. <laughs> Yeah, I, I had a feeling I was like, Partly. and then when you was like, hey, hey, agent, he was calling you different goals, agent, yeah. this agent, I was like, okay. Yeah. Cool. It, 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 it was partly that, and then yeah. I'm a huge Marvel fan, so it's like, oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Agents, agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Agents, yeah, agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., you know, uh, direct Fury, I'm direct Ruckus, and then mm-hmm. I'm a film director as well, so all of that is tied in as well. So, right. You know, that's, that's where a lot of the inspiration came from, and- with Agents of Chaos, we try to talk about issues, mm. but not in the sterile way that it's done on the radio. No offense to anybody on the radio. No radio sucks, bro. Like. I mean, it, it, yeah, <laughs> it, it does. Yeah. But, you know, I always saw that when people tackle or talk about issues, it's like we living in two Bahamas. You got the people, they call into the radio stations and they might say something, but... 
you know, they, they you can tell they're being guarded with their thoughts and what they say. Yeah. And and then you get to the bar, the gas station, or the food store line. It's a completely different conversation. Mm -hmm. No, I want to have that conversation. <laughs> okay. Right, right. You know, don't be scared to call names, times, dates, and places, you know, mm -hmm. and say how you really feel. So that's what, that's what Agents of Chaos um, tend to you know tries to do and then my name is ruckus so mm. <laughs> right. like have you ever like gotten any like backlash hell yeah <laughs> <laughs> let's talk about that because <laughs> like you know um i know like just watching and listening and they like to me because i live a very transparent life mm. and because I've seen so much different stuff happen in this country, mm -hmm. like the backdoor stuff. And I know how this happened, that happened, that happened. Mm -hmm. Like, it's like, all right, I can talk about it because people who know I know this information know mm -hmm. I'm going to talk about it. I ain't going to call no name mm -hmm. or whatever, but I'm going to lay it out yeah. <laughs> and then you decide <laughs> what, okay, what, is, what, is what? What, what it was and you could connect the dots mm -hmm. or whatever. So, mm -hmm. you know, um, so like how... How have you gotten in trouble or like, you know, how does that like change you or did you take like some financial hits? Yeah, all, all, all of the above. Um, wow. Because of the nature of the show, we get zero funding. Like, mm -hmm. it's not like we can't, we, we can't, we can't do a show about selling Go to Kalina and be like, hey, yeah, you guys want to sponsor the show? <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> so then, you know, Corporate Bahamas stares clear of us one hundred percent. Yeah. So, you know that has its that presents its own set of challenges. Um, a lot of times too, um, we have guests come on the show that may have a problem with another guest, We're not, or even just someone in the Bahamian public eye, mm. and we don't necessarily stop them from saying what it is that they have to say. Mm. And then I'm the kind of person like, Lord Jalen don't like somebody and I don't like them too. Oh, it's on my <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, But coming from a martial art background and having been in fights in tournaments and on the street, you know, you are kind of conditioned that way. Like, look, if we can scrap, we can scrap. Mm -hmm. But there is... You always search for peace first. Yeah. And then what a lot of people don't understand is there's always after the fight. You know, like you gotta, we gotta share the same space, be in the same community, in the same country. Yeah. And Bahamians say something that I don't think they understand is twofold. They like to say, you don't know who I know. Well, you the person know. who you just finished fighting, <laughs> you don't know who they know either. Right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So you, 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 Everybody wants to be, you know, the the entertaining one, and that's fine. Mm -hmm. But if you mash certain toes and you and certain doors that look like they can't be open to you, you know, you might want to go back and check some of those fights. Mm -hmm. You know, so yeah, I, I've gotten I've gotten uh, backlash from from persons who may not have liked what I said. Um, Anybody that follows follows me, especially on Facebook, no, I've said the wildest. <laughs> okay. But um what comes along with that too is judgment. You know, people yeah. people don't they 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 think you're a certain kind of because you're that way, they think you're that way all the time. Yeah. You know, so they <laughs> they 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 either guard it with what they say with you or um they choose not to engage you because they figure you're gonna take this and publicize it or blow it out of proportion things like that mm -hmm. so i mean it it comes it, it comes with its pros and cons and you gotta be able to live with the pros and cons and and even make a shift to make a change if you have to mm. you know because i'm i'm pro i'm in that valley of the decision with the podcast now like you know I've had persons come to me, man, Ruckus, this was a really good show. I really enjoyed it. Man, the cussing, man. And I can't get past the cussing, you know? So what do I do? Do I continue to say, F it, I'm going to do my show the way I want to do it? Or do I, regulations. do I 
do I relegate it back? Do I bring it back so that I can reach a wider audience? I mean, I think that's a decision for every content creator. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I just sort of went through this, that way, sort of coming with Everything Cool, because mm-hmm. I always tell the story, Everything Cool was supposed to be called Juan Gal. <laughs> 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 like, and I'm like, cool, and then Buford was like, bro, like, yeah, but girls don't like me calling Gal, but I was like, bro, what? It could be like this, but one cow to survive, but like everything cool is way more marketable. Yeah. So it's like, all right, yeah. cool. And then, was I selling you a car? It's like, it sort of get, you get controversial when you have Rodney Monk and Lincoln Band on your show. Yeah. yeah. And they sit across from you and you yeah. have like an hour, hour 20 conversation and they get whatever they are mm. or whatever. But then it's like, you know, I start to balance that just because. Even though I'm a journalist, I gave a journalist integrity. Okay, like, mm. I'm feeding the question and we having a conversation yeah. across this line and to where it's like, okay, well, yeah, I'm saying these points what people are going to say mm-hmm. and they're going to, like I was saying, I might tell stories and you put it together yeah, a yeah. lot of guests to get it off. So, you know, so I mean, it's different ways, but like, you know, like I know a lot of podcasters is like, all right, well, if this is going to be my content, I'm going to just find a market for my content mm-hmm. and get the support and go ahead with it. So yeah. it's basically a decision to where it's like, all right, well, I notice I can get support from corporate, but maybe if I could get the little liquor store here mm-hmm. or the yeah. sex toy store. Yeah. Yeah. The crowd whatever. yeah. You know, so, you know, I, 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 I know with agents of chaos, I do want to be kind of like, I do want to kind of champion the voice of the unheard. Yeah. Because when it comes to certain issues of the country, there's certain people you're going to hear from right away. Mm-hmm. And in my opinion, they're not necessarily the voice of the people. Mm-hmm. So the only way to get the voice of the people is to talk to the people. Yeah. But one of the things I don't want to happen which I think has happened with the podcast. People are so focused on the way the words and the message is said as opposed to what the words and the message mean. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's how it is with a lot of people for real. But that's see, in that, in that case, I find a lot of times it's an excuse. If, if someone is saying something that's powerful and impactful and meaningful, mm-hmm. but they... Hap- they happen to use profanity. That's not a reason for you to say, all oh, this poisonous cuss, I don't have to listen to them, they're uneducated. Right, no. Right. Maybe they're just kind of frustrated with the situation mm-hmm. and they have no way of trying to figure out how else to express themselves. Mm-hmm. Uh, was it Mr. GoPro, what's going on? But No, but see, even in that, we, just, um, we talk about, I know you on Twitter. Yes. So, like, they say people, sometimes people love the message but hate the messenger. That too. too. That too. Because someone you don't probably don't like could be talking all facts, but, oh, I ain't like them because blah, 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 or you don't pay them attention. But someone you like probably said the same thing. Yeah, but you just that. that, 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 that." So, it's a lot of times it ain't just the message, but who giving the message? Yeah. Yeah. Is it someone likable or whatever? Or even in reverse, Someone who they um dislike could be saying the wrongest thing and they jumping on them, but mm-hmm. the person they like to say the same thing mm-hmm. wrong. Yeah. And it's like, oh, we give them a slide. But I mean, so, my, my question with that is, okay, let's take something extremely simple. Mm-hmm. If you better Jalen, you better PJ, you standing in the road. Mm-hmm. A train is coming to hit you. I say a train is coming to hit you. I don't like rockets, but I think I kiss my ass. Me. <laughs> you can stand there and let the train hit you because you don't like me? Not at all. No, but that's most people, bro. Like, even with your own family. Like, the ball. Like, right? so, so. <laughs> no, but like, no, yeah, like, okay, like, certain family members, I've told, let's say, some esoteric knowledge from like 10 years ago. Oh, wait, blah, 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 blah. Nah, they trying to put me on game 10 years later about the same thing as telling you years ago. But you ain't like it when it came from me. But you believe someone who just meet hmm? the other day and, oh, yeah, bro, this person knows so much. Right, right, right. I'm like, bro, I was on this long time. <laughs> and then, like, I'm saying this for years, yes. but you ain't listen. So it's like, that's just human nature, bro. I didn't yeah. think. I mean, it, it is. And so 
That's why a prophet is loved everywhere except his it, home. Town. Except, except his own hometown. Yeah, right. So, and it, it's it's interesting that you said that because even in that, um, when I look at the analytics for the show, I was kind of surprised that the countries where the show was getting to. Mm. I'm talking like as far as Vietnam and the Philippines. Mm. I mean, these, these niggas don't even speak English. Right. <laughs> yeah. You know, but. Um, you know, I, I've had a person say to me, I don't know what you buy this equipment for. You're wasting your time. And nobody can listen to you. Nobody know where the Bahamas is, this and that, this and that. And it's like, no, I'm still going to give it a shot. Right. I'm still going to try it because, you know, really and truly the show was born out of, for lack of a better term, out of, uh, how do I say this? Frustration. Frustration, but it goes deeper than that. It was... For lack of a better term, I say mental illness. Yours or the mine, society? mine. Okay. Um, in 2016, I was living in Freeport when Matthew came through, and okay. I thought that was the worst it could have gotten, and it was bad. Matthew hit Freeport, died by. Yes, it did. Yeah, baby. Yes, it did. Uh, it's like I remember. Being in the U.S. and people was like, "Wait, no, I saw it look like a war. Like it did look like a war zone. It like, did coming back home and it's like, but everything look beat right up. Yeah, oh, but it in uh, between Freeport and West End, at least the parts I saw. Yeah, no. if Freeport, if yeah, Nassau, but they wasn't talking about that like that. Yeah, I yeah. see that was the part part of the problem. Yeah, if Nassau looked like a war zone, uh, West End looked like the Saiyans had landed. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so um. The then um it was pretty bad. And I thought that was the worst I could have gotten. And then Dorian was like, Hi, hello. Hmm. So um I don't think I ever really like got past that because I lost where I was staying at the time, most of my clothes, lost my job. Um started to come back from that. And then Dorian came and just like completely obliterated it. It's, Double down. You know. Three years later. In, in, in that, um, a friend of mine and I, we were at one of the shelters. It was the the, the Seventh-day Adventist Church next to Independence Park. Mm-hmm. And we went there because we weren't sure that the place we were staying was, you know, um, structurally sound. And oh, that's probably great. <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah, I was telling you, you might as well put that. Yeah. Yeah. That's one. Was it one in there too? Right. Oh. Okay. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> All right. All right. Yeah, the the we were staying at the um Tarricane shelter across from Independence Park. And when we got there, there was already like electricity in the air, like you know. We started seeing what had happened to the people in Abaco and we started oh, so this before the, the before the storm actually got there, yeah. Okay. We started, we started, the report started coming in from people who were, and, and the people in Abaco. We even started seeing footage of people in Abaco and what had happened to them. We started hearing about persons who were dead or missing and things like that. So it was already a tense um, situation. And I'll never forget the, talk about calm before the storm. Mm-hmm. I'll never forget how eerily quiet Freeport was before the storm got that far. It's like, at least when storms was coming, you could hear the thunder and the rain and everything coming. Nothing. And it was to the point where people started questioning whether or not this storm is actually coming. Then you started getting the notices from the utility companies. You shut down electricity. We shut down the water, this and that. Around 7 p.m., they shut down the water. So that just added to the 
tense situation. Then the storm came, and then you started thinking, okay, we've been through hurricanes before, standard procedure, standard MO. Then at one point, it felt like all the air had been sucked out of the room we were in. And it was like literally difficult to breathe. And you could hear nothing. There's a difference between silence and hearing nothing. You could hear nothing. And then the roof got torn off where we were. Wow. And I'm looking at this. I'm watching a tornado right over my head rip the roof off of us. And then a part of the ceiling fell and landed on a little boy. Uh, he survived? He survived, but we didn't think so. Oh, okay. I mean, they, like, watching all of that debris land on him, we in a church now. Yeah. So we watch it, we watch, like, you know, beams and sheetrock and concrete. When I say that landed this close to that boy's head, I'm being very serious. We thought the boy was, the mother was hysterical, and I'm trying to hold her back from getting herself injured. And my friend who I was with, they're helping to dig the boy out from the rubble. And we thought he was dead. But when he reached out to grab my friend's hand, we pulled him on. We had to run downstairs into the other part of the church. And I'd been through traumatic experiences before, but I've never experienced anything like that. And that, along with other near-death experiences of that day, listen to what I'm saying, that day, mm. you know, it, it took a toll on my mind. And Did you ever go, like, to counseling or therapy? No. Mm. And I regret doing that because, unfortunately, again, you know, I come from a school of thought where going to talk to a therapist meant she was crazy. I'd be angry if you ain't doing that. Yeah. But I should have done that. And I see the, the error in doing that. Um, a part of the show's uh, DNA is therapy. There was a lot of, I had to get out, hmm. you know. And I figured if I can't talk to anyone, I'll talk to the microphone, and then whatever comes out, you know. What come on. I think a lot of podcasters feel like that. I mean, for me, yeah. a lot of time, one of the reasons I do it is because it's therapy. Is mm -hmm. because especially with mother sick, it's like yeah, whatever I going through, or when I put an episode, I just went through something or saw something, mm -hmm. I thought about it, and like let me talk about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that's uh, actually how I I found with mother sick. You know, oh, because okay. I I was saying to myself like. I can't be the only boy on planet Earth <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> that thinks and feels like this. And then I came across your last like, y yeah, this, this is it. Yeah, nigga, mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. Subscribe to this. Subscribe to that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so yeah, you know, yeah. I, I, I was I was glad I found it, and you know, it was more. I love you like when medicine more than everything cool because it's like okay, <laughs> y'all be laughing at this, but then it's like. I mean, that's why I made with Mother Sick for it. Yeah. Because it's like, it ain't no laughing thing. No. Or whatever. Mm -hmm. Like, we about to you get, get serious. It's, a, it's a serious. Bro, you might as well book this up to the light, bro. Because I mean, bro, he ain't even cooperating, man. <laughs> Wake with niggas still, you know what I mean? Stop being like that. Oh, uh, but, but we we in the dark. <laughs> Halfway in the dark. Halfway. But no, I, but, I, um, I, yeah, let's, let's take a pause real quick. I was trying to think, like, well, hold on. Is BC really doing some real dumb in the that ain't change? Is that really? But this is a part of every I mean, that's why, yeah, people like, you know, this is yeah. a part of every include the light going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We ain't seeing lizard and snake crawl across the floor. Of course, man. That's uh, in the bottom. People, people <laughs> walking in while the show recording. Um and then saying some stupid uh, like oh, are you all recording it. Not even really? that. No, we just have guests. What happened one time? I think Jade left. Someone left the gate open, and my boy walking and was like, "You what you doing?" <laughs> 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 or whatever. But you know, but 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 basically, just to get back on topic, um, 
talking, but sometimes you need to just get thoughts out. Yeah. And talking through it, mm-hmm. because you know, a lot of times we go through situations, and sometimes they don't even be current. It might be feelings you had ten years ago. And yeah. You just never talk about never it. Never talk about it. And like you know, you might suppress it long enough, and mm-hmm. something trigger it, yeah. and now it's like, okay, now I'm comfortable. Yeah. Saying how I say, okay, I was acting like this way because I was trying to fill in this void mm-hmm. five years ago. So yeah. now people are saying, but I like the new you compared to the old you, but the old you is still the new you. It's just you wasn't. You wasn't fixing the problems back yeah, then, but yeah. you realize now. So it yeah. is 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 comforting to see that at least the tide is starting to shift. Mm-hmm. Um, we did a sh- we did an episode on um, mental health struggles, mm-hmm. and it was comforting getting the feedback from that show. Like you know, um, thank you for doing the show. Um, the, we had a we had a doc, uh, we had a uh, was it a psychiatrist psychologist one of the psychs no, something both. Yeah, so we, but I've, one had, of them. I've had this year well in twenty twenty one because this is gonna be in twenty twenty two we've had two types of um, therapists come on the show yeah so let's you know, go with that therapist yeah mm-hmm. so we we had a we had a licensed therapist on the show and he was able to give some very good statistics and and some good information even how to cope with trauma. And his name escapes me right now. I really can't remember. I'm completely sorry, sir. <laughs> um, but to see that, like how you mentioned earlier with the generational thing, the generations that came before us that put out that narrative, like I'm not going to talk to somebody because I'm not crazy. Or the, I don't want nobody in my business. I don't want nobody in my business. That is starting to change. And and I'm, it's, it's, hap- it's you know, comforting to see that yeah because i often wonder and i told you this on your show i was like when i moved back home i was like bro i wouldn't mind like living and moving in freeport if things up because i tied it now so like crumb the dirty this and that and that i was like let's see life and i think we would all be better if we had what I, what Freeport was and mm. what Abo was beco- Abaco was becoming. Yes, yeah. we had those two dynamics added to now, so we live it in a better Bahamas. Yes, yes. But you know, um, unfortunately, in one swoop, <laughs> both what? of those what? two is yeah. gone. Now we in the situation we in. I don't. I don't think people quite realize the battering this country is taken just off of hurricanes alone. Yeah, Because right? yeah. if you think about it, if we, could, we could go back as far as 92. That was Andrew. Yeah. yeah. And if you go from Andrew to Dorian, there's basically been a major hurricane in the Bahamas every two and a half years. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So even if this last recent stretch, 2016 was Matthew. That was for the Northern Bahamas. 2017 was Joaquin. That was for the Southern Bahamas. Mm-hmm. And Irma. Yeah. And you had Irma. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? Then you had uh uh not yeah. then you had Dorian. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's four major hurricanes in five, six years. Yeah, 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 five, five, six, yeah. So, you know, that had to that has to have had a mental effect on us as a nation. It has. How, how long are we gonna keep running from that though? I think it raises a question, and is this a question always in my mind? Are we really supposed to be inhabiting in these islands? That's a damn good question. Yeah, because it's like, okay, and I always wonder, I say, why are Freeport always getting hit by these hurricanes? But then when you look at the geographic location of Freeport, it's super flat. Yeah. And with the rise in tides, you're always going to get hit. So then people be like, well, why people ain't investing in the ground bomb? Because they already see, bro, it don't make sense if this can get hit. All the time. So I'm like, bro, we might as well start moving people off that island mm-hmm. and start spreading them throughout the rest of the... It, it, I, I, I tell persons too, like, it's one thing to see it on the news. is another thing to see it in person. In, yeah, right. Dorian sat off Grand Bahama and didn't move for like 60 hours, 58, 60 hours. Yeah. And all it did was churn water and mm-hmm. send water inland. There were businesses on Queens Highway that was up to the roof in water. Mm. And then the water just sat there. Yeah. The company that I used to work for, they had 
trailers on the side of the building. The water picked up those trailers and took them down the street. Like we were shocked where we actually found them. Mm-hmm. You know, so um I I'm I'm so sorry that I don't have the photo anymore to show persons, but the school, um, one of the schools, mm-hmm. uh, again the name escapes me. It's it, it's a two it's a two story building. The water was up to the second story in the classroom. Yeah. So, see things like that has an effect. I used to live in that area. Mm. The houses were covered. Some of those people were home when that water came in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, what I did mean, they do? Run up in the manhole? I mean, I think a lot of people had to do it. Yeah. Like, you know, and then just the overall trauma of, let's imagine if you've been in living in Grand Bahama since 2000, you had mm-hmm. experienced that at least five, six times already. Exactly. Yeah. Or whatever, like, exactly. And, 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 and the saddest part about it is how quickly people forget. I'm not entirely sure it's a coping mechanism as well. No, it is a coping mechanism because by, okay, during the in September, everybody, by Christmas, everybody was like, yeah, deck the halls with all the joy. Yeah. La, 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 but la. It, it, I, I, I said it's sad because, yeah. okay, prior to Dorian hitting, and I'm sorry if Grand Bahamians, if y'all get mad because I say it like this, but prior to Dorian hitting, Let's just say Freeport isn't the friendliest city. It's not really the most the most neighborly. You know. Mm-hmm. When Dorian hit, uh you had no choice but to be a brother's keeper. Mm. Like that that was a way to survive. You see what I'm saying? And then, like you said, by the time Christmas rolled around, right back to the same the old same old, same old. You know. So, but it was like that with Matthew, and it was like that with our our other hurricanes. So, like, when do we start to understand, hey, maybe we we need to re-look at how we deal with one another? I mean, I think for the most part, and Bahamas normally have this reputation of being people of the bourgeoisie. Yeah, just y'all need to stop that shit. <laughs> but yeah, but it's like you know that's just overall reputation. Not even just an island, but that's country the reputation. reputation. But other Caribbean countries, like <laughs> y'all, the bougie niggas, yeah, that's true. or whatever. So it's like you know, so with that is this individual mind state, or like you know, you being raised up like, oh, I don't want these head of people in my house, yeah, or you only hang out with. These mm. type of persons, yeah, or blah, yeah. blah 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 blah. So you never think in a, a uh, you don't have a communal mindset. Mm. So that's why growing older, a lot of people have a tough time with building community. Mm. But whatever I've seen, that's why I say in the whole generational thing, going mm-hmm. back to the whole collaboration thing. Mm. When I think it's easier. Well, for me personally and for us creatively to collaborate now because we put the work in solo. Uh, and we mm-hmm. did it by ourselves yes. first. Yes. Because they know, but like, because I was trying to get people, before I even started the original people network, I was trying to help people make a network and do this and make a show and what it up, but all this and all that. So when I started doing it on my own, I obviously at first people didn't believe and this and that. Even people, I started to. You know, the hard to show with and yeah. really was fully sold in. But when I start doing, doing, doing it and doing, doing it and doing it and I keep on, oh, six months past a year, but oh, this this consistent. Mm. Or oh, now it's like, okay, jump on the train. Boom, 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 boom. You know what? Whatever. That's like, the behavior word of the day. Liking man. <laughs> let's, let's, let's talk about liking man. <laughs> I sure y'all talk about liking man before. Let's talk about Actually, that was the first episode of <laughs> 2021. <laughs> let, 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 but it was start liking man. Yeah. <sighs> you know what? It, it, let's start with you, brother Peach. <laughs> define liking man. How, how, how did you all define liking man on that show? Um. Oh no, we just say I just say start liking mine based off of yeah, so um, weird stuff. 
No, it was based off it's of funny. Okay, you slide it in the people DMs. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I have a uh, addiction to sliding in the women DM. So mm. one of my boys, it was a situation yeah. when one of my boys called me, who called me like, bro, you got a blah, 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 blah. You can't have me doing this because those is we tripping out. So I was like, cool. So I was like, I tried to turn in the joke. So whatever you would do, <laughs> just do the opposite. So instead yeah. of being around women, we were hanging around with your boys. Yeah. Instead of sliding in her DM, go text your boys. <laughs> yeah, you try <laughs> to put a, you put so a reverse those, on it. So don't stop, start liking, man. Don't stop liking, man. Don't, don't stop. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, all right, all right, all right. right, right. So everything what you was doing before, just do the reverse. Okay. <laughs> so instead of spending all your money on women, go in the block and, you know. Okay, all right, all right. All right, all right. <laughs> so but that was just, that like, was that nice. was the whole joke. That was that. a joke, yeah. Yeah, yeah but um, people just be lotioning. But no, yeah, people just that's, be lotioning because they want to see you do the work. To right. see if you believe, and that's just, I just take that as business and all. They want to see you, see how much you believe in your idea first mm. before they hop on. Okay, even with the whole, like how we cosplay and things like that. Mm-hmm. All right. People, Shout out to the cosplayers. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So people was cosplaying way before I really started getting into it, right? Mm-hmm. But as soon as I get into it, oh, I know, oh, well, because I see you doing it. I may think about doing, but you could do this on yourself. Right. Like I just decided to do it because this is the perfect opportunity, or whatever. Or, or, or if you're doing this, this could ruin your brand. I'm like, no, this is no, a part of the no. creative thing. We making right. skits. We okay if we ain't got a topic for the show. We play IBS is like PG. This is gonna be a cosplay call that such and such. Yeah, put on that suit, and it's like, bro. But when they say, okay, well, why are you doing this? Well. It's money behind this. I do. I, 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 oh, no, I get it. Oh, okay, I would it not. But it shouldn't take me having to break down all these things for you to make up your mind and mm. do something that you want to do. Right. You know? Yeah. And that's really what the end of the day. So same, same thing with you, but PJ? Yeah, basically. Same. Yeah, the same thing. Yeah. Like so it, technically that is, like, in my you only want to do it when I did, you yeah. see me doing yeah, it, yeah. making sense behind it. I You could not come to that conclusion on your own. I mean, there's a... There's that level of liking, man. And yeah. then there's a more sinister level of liking. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I mean, okay. You got original people's network. We got be here on everything cool, right? Yeah. Surface liking, man, is okay, yeah, you making money now. Now I even I'm Ooh, getting right. Sinister liking, man, <laughs> is nigga think he's all luck because he got the show and thing, but yeah, I ain't yeah. never like that. Nigga. Ain't nobody has watched that. Ain't anybody, anybody want to watch, watch no everything cool. First of all, forget you. Right. <laughs> all right. Secondly, like, you know, it's almost like dime if you do and dime if you don't. Yeah. Yeah. That's right, what man? most definitely. So for whatever reason, OPN jumps off on my multitude of platforms and now you're the next like Logan Ball or something like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nah, I mean, like I said, you, you can't win for losing. Mm-hmm. No, but when, when that happens, everybody won. Uh, hey, I, I, I know Jalen and PJ. I, 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 Caribbean podcast director, and then when we won them PSAs, all right, all right. Like that. that's when people. I feel like that at that point, that's when people was like, "All right, they doing whatever. Stop. We yeah. can't say nothing about it because, yeah. all right, yeah, we might quirky and all this other stuff, but they took that same energy and did these yeah. big things where yeah. these other people recognizing them for doing this stuff exactly. Right? So they ain't just all oh, they doing it in their little corners like. Yeah. Wink, you can't yeah, do that. Exactly. Like, oh, we did something which you couldn't do. I, I, so, I, I, I think too. That's probably the at the at the at the core of all the man likingness yeah. <laughs> is jealousy. Yeah, it is, or uh, some form it's, of jealousy. It's, it's yeah. In some some or form of insecurity. Insecurity. Exactly. So because it's yeah. like when people see you doing different, they won't judge it. But when you start doing things. Mm-hmm. Because of the difference, what they couldn't do is mm-hmm. like, and then not only you doing it, but then you starting to have some success with it. Yeah, yeah. So mm-hmm. it's like you know, now nah, it's like, all right, mm-hmm. I look like a hater if I hate on it, mm-hmm. but I ain't with support it, so I'm gonna just be indifferent. Yeah, right. mm-hmm. Now, 
We can get a little deeper this now. Okay. <laughs> My question to both of y'all. Uh, who are the biggest set of man likers <laughs> <laughs> in Bahamian society? Who? Um, I mean, I don't think it's any individual person. I think. No, 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 no. no just no. like a group of people. Um, or a, a, a section of people. That's a good question. Mm. Um, I have an answer, but it might shock you. I think I think, I I think a that. little bit of corporate <laughs> Bahamas oh. when mm. when you didn't put in for a long time. But then the crazy thing is, right? Mm. The people you may even talk about that you say is the biggest mm -hmm. like minus. I am part of that. Because yeah. I work. <laughs> think so? No, because I only said it because I work in marketing and advertising. Okay, okay. okay. So it's like, okay, when when it comes to social influences and recommending them for like ads for this company and that company, I've been instrumental in doing that. Okay. So it's like, I've been on both sides of All the right. spectrum. So it's like, okay, I know when a company finally wouldn't go with a social influencer because of their influence, but then you didn't catch them when it was young or how, you know, shout out to Das Quay and Sawyer Boy. Yeah, it'd shout be, out to them, yeah. It'd be like, oh, well, we tired of seeing them. Who's the fresh faces? Yeah. And then they would come to a person like me and be like, Okay, who knew on the scene? And I'd be like, all right, well, y'all didn't probably know about this person yet. Mm -hmm. Oh, blah, blah, blah. And then the behind this door, oh, well, you ain't as big as this person, so you get this. Yeah, pick. but then you got you pick a side. Don't be like, oh, we pick, we tired right, of right. seeing right. Dark Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. So, like, like, that, then you, you know, nobody really know you like that. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. So it's like, you know, I've been, I've been, I started seeing it from both sides. Yeah. Let's put it like that. Okay. All right. So, all right. I'd say, I guess, corporate Bahamas or, some of the people so that that goes sort of go back to what i was saying earlier where well before we started recording where it's like i had a point where i don't gotta sell you on me it's exactly. you take it or leave it exactly mm -hmm. you know. what would you better pj yeah it's almost almost echoing the the, the latter part of his argument too it's mm -hmm. almost like in my opinion, some of the content creators or some of the RT people themselves, because it's a big clickish thing, like you say. And oh, I hate day, that clicking mm, shit. Yeah. I hate mm -hmm. that. At the end of the day, you're seeing the same faces honestly for real, right? Mm, and there's yeah. people who generate the numbers and stuff. Mm. And I mean, of course, they're doing it more frequently. Yeah. yeah. But when you have like the newer faces coming up and they do anything and they just be doing it for long sometimes, mm. they just ain't getting it because they ain't popular. Yeah. And everybody just liking, you know, these other people because mm. they've been out there or whatever. Mm. So in, uh, in a sense, it's almost like sometimes the consumer and like a lot of the it's a conglomerate the, the and then yeah, it's right. the consumers so the, based the consumer on consumer and then yeah. like the artsy type people and the people mm -hmm. the content creators who making the content like I say in terms mm -hmm. of doing the the click type stuff keeping everything in the click and then yeah. making all the stuff be out there because it's mm -hmm. like ah yeah we can collaborate with each other mm -hmm. and they keep doing these big mega collaborations with each other yeah. instead of helping somebody you trying to come up you yeah. know all right all right all right like I said my my answer. <laughs> I'll probably get in trouble for this. Go ahead. But I'm going to say it anyway. Okay. Some of uh -huh. biggest set of man like us uh -huh. in this country, mm -hmm. parents. Mm, parents. Remember what we talked about earlier? Mm -hmm. Sometimes persons are insecure about are you talking about basically hating on what you're doing? Yes. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's Because that's, 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 that's the Yeah, yeah. A lot of times your parents and yeah, siblings and families be your biggest and first haters because yeah. they like, oh, why are you doing this? And why yeah, you yeah. Doing? they don't see the vision. They don't and, see the vision. And, and, yeah. and I'll, I'll throw this disclaimer in there, too. When I say parents, I should extend that and say family. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. like you said, you know, family may look at you, oh, but you, what you want to do this for? Right. Yeah, yeah. You think you can be successful you, you, with that? Yeah. Yeah, you, you need to try out go get one real job right. uh, what <laughs> you know and then as you get successful and then it's like now oh, the now, the, now, now your I, family I, is I, in a position I think, I think where, every creative goes through that because oh, yeah. now it's like or especially when it ain't something that they can understand like okay mm -hmm. you being a singer mm -hmm. or something okay well you get a record deal they can understand it but now you were working in a digital space and you become like a social influencer or mm -hmm. YouTuber mm -hmm. it's like Oh, I understand it, but I see you getting money from it. Yeah, so I mean, <laughs> you know, then it's, that, then that's when the entitlement comes in. Mm, you yeah. know, yeah, <laughs> and 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 you know, yes, is your family. Yes, you love them. Yes, you want to help them, and you want to see them happy and healthy. But at the same time, there's a limit to that. Mm. 
Because mm-hmm. all of us in here would be lying if you would say you had a certain family member that really didn't support your endeavors and probably was out there talking to <laughs> other people. <laughs> all right. My. And then you get successful and now they feel like they're entitled to some of your success. Like, all right. Like, hey, where's well, that? Where's you wasn't with me shooting in the gym. Like, you, you, know what talking mean? Like a yeah. you know what I mean? Once years ago. Or yeah. they want to yeah. talk about you and claim you and this. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, so. yeah. That's why I was just tell people, break, do whatever you like want to do. Do that and that. The, oh, the politicians shit. like mine, man. <laughs> the most man. <laughs> okay. <laughs> actually, yeah, actually, <laughs> let's go right there, right? Because you got to do part two to this, man. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's a very it's a part part two be on coordinated agency. Yeah, we can do this part two. <laughs> yeah, we can wrap that up, wrap this up. So thanks again, um, Ruckus, for joining us. I want to thank both of y'all for having me today. Y'all need to get That's out it. there. Uh, if you ain't subscribed to everything cool, do it. <laughs> All right, get yourself some good quality content. Mm-hmm. So subscribe to me as well. I appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. But <laughs> be on everything cool right now. So j- yeah. just just like OPN altogether. Y'all need to support the brethren. Right, yeah. you know, y'all stop it. <laughs> oh, he never had me on the show. You ever ask? They probably did ask. Right? <laughs> Just was like, eh, oh, well, but, okay, but then stop liking man. <laughs> okay, and subscribe <laughs> to uh-huh. everything cool. Bombs. And what are the shows name? Cool. Well, well, mother sick. Well, mother sick. The home here. All, 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 all of these. Right. OPN. Look, look. The right. original People's Network. Look up, brother, brother, brother Jalen. Look up, brother PJ. And subscribe to them on their different social media uh, platforms and PGs, too. Yeah, all that, too. all that, all that, all that. <laughs> non pay please. Yes, all of it. Do it now. <laughs> before the show, we just pause the video. <laughs> subscribe. Give you five <laughs> and you know, and 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 do your your good deed for twenty twenty two. Yeah. Boom. 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 Just like that. So thanks again. Part two going to be on Agents of Chaos. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. I really want to get into that politician thing. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I want yeah. a particular politician, <laughs> but, you know. Um, thank you all again for watching. And we can see you all later. Yeah, you see. My mommy hoping nothing happens.